All right, when you order a Buscadero BSX-110 from us, you can either pick it up in person or have it shipped. If it's shipped, there are five things you'll have to assemble when you pull it out of the box. The swing arm bolt, the handlebars, the front wheel, the right foot peg, and the front fender. But first, you have to remove it from the crate. Yours will look a little more assembled than this out of the box, but this is how they arrive for us before we give it the busket arrow treatment. You can start removing the bolts from the metal frame with a 14 millimeter socket. It'll go a lot faster if you have an impact driver, but obviously you can use a socket wrench as well. Then remove the axle nut and pull the axle out of the mount. Then slide the spacers back on and the nut on the axle and set that aside for later. Then get the bike up on a stand. If you don't have a lift like this, you can just set it on something like a milk crate or a five gallon bucket. First thing is installing the swing arm bolt. It'll be a whole lot easier if you take the time to remove the muffler first using a number five Allen key and a 13 millimeter socket or wrench. Then use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the three bolts on this plastic mud guard and set it aside for later. Then find the plastic bag with the swing arm bolt hardware in it. There are two spacers that fit into each side of the shock mount. Once you get those in, lift the swing arm up to the bottom of the shock and stick the bolt about halfway through. Then you're going to insert the washer or spacer right in between the shock and the right side of the mount. Use a screwdriver to line everything up and push the bolt through. Then using a 13 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter wrench, tighten it down pretty snug. Then take the three 10 millimeter bolts from before and reinstall that plastic mud guard as well as the muffler. Next up is the handlebars. You'll need a number five Allen key and a 13 millimeter socket. The bar mounts are underneath the triple clamp, so you'll need to remove them and place them back on top. Then very carefully rotate the handlebars into position without putting any tension on the electrical wires that feed into the kill switch and the starter button. Those connections can be somewhat delicate and are a huge pain to fix if they get yanked out. Then assemble the mounts over the bars. Stick the bolts through the clamps and put the nut on from underneath. Make sure to center the bars and then adjust them forward or backward wherever feels the most comfortable. We recommend matching the angle or the rake of the forks. When you're tightening down the clamps, make sure you tighten them down evenly. Do a little on the front, then a little on the back until it's tight. Keep an eye on the gaps between the clamps to make sure they're going down evenly. Next is the front wheel. The brake caliper is being held on by just one bolt for shipping. Remove that bolt and set it aside. Then grab your front wheel and axle and pull off the spacers. It's important to know that the longer spacer goes on the side of the wheel with the disc brake. So insert the longer spacer into the hub. Line it up with the bottom of the fork and insert the axle bolt about halfway through. Then insert the smaller spacer on the other side Line it up to the fork and push the axle bolt all the way through. Spin on the nut, then use a size 22 socket and a 17 millimeter socket or wrench and tighten it down. You don't need to break your tools, but make sure you get it nice and tight. Now we're going to prepare the brake caliper bolts with some thread lock. Then use a flathead screwdriver to very carefully separate the brake pads so you can slide it right over the disc without any troubles. Then rock the caliper up into place, insert the bolts, and tighten them down. Now for the right side foot peg. Remove the small cotter key on the bottom of the bracket and pull out the pin and spring. Then grab your foot peg, install the spring with the large squared end over the peg and put the smaller round side of the spring around the peg bracket. Then you have to wrestle the peg into submission so the holes line up. Slide in the pin and then lock it in with the cotter key. Like that, done. All right, the last part is the front fender. This can be a little tricky, but it's doable. Spacers and everything just like this. Line up one of the bolts first and carefully thread it in, just doing each bolt one at a time. It would be really easy to strip these threads by going in a little crooked. So take your time and do it carefully. Install the back two bolts first and then move on to the one in the front. Again, an impact driver makes this whole process a lot faster, but you can also use a socket wrench. And that's it. Once you gas it up, your bike is ready to ride.